Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, just to start things off, I do want to apologize. I do sound a little bit different. I'm at the very beginning stages of getting a cold again. What joy. But I feel well enough to be able to do this video, so let's get started. Today we're obviously looking at the this new printer from Nova 3D. This is the Gem 3. Now, by the name, you may have guessed that this is a jewelry-specific 3D printer. As far as I've been able to tell, this machine has been designed to focus on certain functions and volumes that would benefit the vast majority of people like me. Meaning that the build plate isn't too big, it's not too small, it has built-in heating functions designed to work with castable resins, uh, which most castable resins nowadays seem to require. It has a pretty high-resolution LCD panel, uh, it's ultra constrained with a super sturdy Z-axis. Uh, it's beautiful metal casing. You know, it's got that premium feel about it. And due to that solid construction, it's going to be fairly easy to maintain and keep it looking pretty, so to speak. It has a very well proportioned build volume at 154 by 87 by 120 millimeters. This build volume makes a lot of sense for smaller workshops aiming to print, say, one or two trees at a time. Uh, you can find these trees, by the way, at the Bluecast website where they provide them for free, which is phenomenally cool of them because um, they could very well charge for these and probably they should. <laughs> uh, these are really neat. And you, as I said, you can fit about two trees on this build plate, but you can also fit a ton of, of 50 rings to be exact per plate, depending on your design. Or maybe you can fit a couple of bracelets or maybe you're just a very, very small but very high premium product uh, studio printing, say five rings at a time. This makes sense. As mentioned, the LCD panel is a higher resolution panel uh, coming out at 9K, which at this size makes an incredibly small 17 micron square pixel. And I think that's really important and I'm really happy that Nova 3D did keep that in mind. It does seem that rectangular pixels are becoming a thing now with the ultra high 16K panels, um, which is something that Nova 3D actually has access to because they have other machines that are available like the Whale 4. Now that said, uh, at the scale of these rectangular pixels or square for that matter, I don't think that print quality is going to be anything to worry about regardless of the machine. You won't be able to see or feel these you know, jagged curves on the Y or the X axis for that matter you won't have to guarantee that all of your, your prints are in line with that rectangular long side so that you don't have any of those jaggedy bits. It, it's so small, you won't, it doesn't matter. I found personally that 50 micron is the point where you can visibly see the, um, it's got like a shine or a glisten to it. And that's actually all the stair-stepped pixels. Below that LCD is the, the latest generation of 405 nanometer COB or chip on board UV LED light source, along with a homogenizer lens, which provides excellent light uniformity across the entire LCD surface. So you're gonna have the perfect prints in the center or perfect prints towards the edge. It won't really matter, unlike say DLPs. Inside the print chamber on the left side, we have an air purifier, which is of course removing those VOCs and smells and venting them back out into the room. And then on the right side, we have a built-in heater, which we actually have access to control over here on the UI. If we go to tools, heating, we can start that up right there and you can set the temperature as much as you want. And this modulates the temperature. It, it's not just on or off. It, it'll actually like try to achieve say 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, you can go all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius and it will try to maintain that. The heater is also recycling the air within the chamber. If you look over here behind the Z-axis, you can actually see the unit. It's drawing the air in from within this space. It's not pulling air in from outside. So if it was doing that, and you had say a cold workshop like mine does in the wintertime sometimes, uh, you might have that unit struggle massively to maintain temperature, but because it's recycling the air, it, it does heat up quite fast. Now that said, um, being that it is a chamber heater, uh, it's heating the air. As soon as I lift this lid, all that hot air is gone. <laughs> so that's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, and then the, of course, the other thing, as I mentioned, that air purifier is pulling the air out. So it's heating the air and then removing it. Um, this is the problem. This is the fundamental issue with a chamber heater like this. Uh, many of the printers nowadays are switching over to heating the vat itself or some kind of under vat system. There's other ways of going about it. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't work. The problem is that, like I just said, it's counterintuitive sometimes, 
And uh, the best use is actually when it's been on for quite a while and you get the aluminum, the entire, the mass of the printer inside heats up, but the actual chamber heater itself doesn't really come into contact with the resin. So yeah, it's just one of my least favorite methods of heating resin. Now you might notice that I have a bottle of X-Wax over here because Nova 3D and Bluecast actually teamed up at some point and they collaborated. I don't know the whole story behind this, but the outcome has basically been that the Gem 3 is Bluecast verified. It's factory perfected by Bluecast for X-Wax and I think other resins as well from that company. So that if you were to buy this printer, you would be able to have that resin profile from the companies, either one, Nova 3D or Bluecast, provided to you and it will work right off the bat. And that exactly has been my experience so far. So if you're already a Bluecast user, then this is quite possibly one of the best printers that you could possibly buy in order to hit the ground running um, and just continue doing production. It's not quite ecosystem because you can print whatever you want on this. Uh, it's just like any other printer in that regards where you have to go and make resin profiles, you're using Chidubox or Lychee or whatever. Um, but being that these two companies have decided to talk, this is de definitely one of those best case scenarios. So to verify that, I printed some of my test models, my very typical test models. We've already seen this before. If you've seen the X-Wax review, if you haven't, go check out that video. But if you have, then it's the same models. Uh, I, these didn't quite get cured enough. They should have stayed in the alcohol longer, but my alcohol was getting really dirty. So I, I think I pulled them out sooner rather than later. Not a big deal. Uh, for this project though, uh, I went out of my way and I designed, and I'm gonna launch with you now because this is the first time talking about it. <laughs> this is a new jewelry specific resin calibration test plate. I designed this so that you can test most of the common things that you might need to know about a casting resin. Uh, for starters, we have an embossed example here so you can see the details of a script if you were to uh, print engraving, for example, you wanna make sure that those details don't get overexposed and washed out. Same thing with debossed, which is when you engrave, you put it in, embossed is raised. In the middle, I have six millimeter, five, four, three, two, one and a half, and one millimeter stone settings, so that quite literally after you print this plate and take a stone of whatever variety you're working with, and plop that into each stone setting and make sure that it actually fits. Because the last thing any, any jeweler really needs to do is print you know, a big elaborate pave piece and find out that every single stone setting is now wrong <laughs> to some degree. And you have to go in and drill out all of them. Or worst case, they're actually too big and none of your stones fit. So with this, you should be able to just plop those in and do a, an actual real world test fit. Now it doesn't take into account metal shrinkage. That's when your metal cools and actually shrinks a little bit. You still need to factor that in, but you can build that into your resin profile. And then lastly, because these have kind of been very useful, uh, where I do the single support and then I gradually add more, I decided to miniaturize that and add that onto here with these little rings. Um, I have a single, three supports, five, and then like a ton. And this is just to give you a, an idea of how strong the resin is. So when you print, do you need to have a lot of supports? Can you get away with one? Probably shouldn't get away with one anyway. This is designed to fail, but if it does print, then you have pretty good signs that this is a really good resin. And then the last little feature is that hole in the middle, which is designed to help you get the elephant's foot compensation. So if you wanna print something flat on the bed without any supports, you don't wanna have that raised lip where the burn-in layers are overexposing it and making it grow. You can use that, it should be exactly 10 millimeters. If it's not, then you know exactly how much you should compensate by. Anyway, getting back to the printer. My experience with the Gem 3 was not all smooth sailing. Uh, when I received the, the machine, I had an issue with the build plate attachment mechanism. So as we can see up here, this is a cam lever. When it pushes, when I push down, it's applying force to the build plate onto the gantry and that's what holds it in place. When I received it, I actually had this block here. They look identical, but they are not. This one had a bit of an issue with the spring steel plate. It would, um, I think over time, it would just lose its spring. I don't know exactly what kind of spring steel it is. I do know quite a bit about metals, but um, metals under tension are kind of a separate thing from metallurgy. So anyway, it, they sent the company, Nova 3D just sent me a brand new print block and it's 
a different, slightly different design. It works perfectly, it's nice and tight, it no longer wobbles. So that should be your experience when you unbox one because now that it's been addressed, uh, all of them should be updated. The other problem is that this machine has not been incorporated natively into any of the mainstream slicers as of yet. I reached out to Leechy after I received the machine uh, and they said they hadn't even heard of it yet, but they were gonna get on it and they would be adding it to the slicer so that we can just import it, have all of the settings necessary and we were good. Chidu Box didn't have this machine natively supported either, but I was able to fairly easily import it as a custom machine. And that's how I did all of my slicing for this review. Despite the absolutely creepy screen recording that goes on all the time with Chidu Box, pervy software you, uh, be better. Nova 3D also has their own slicer called Nova Maker, which seems to be a sort of fork of Chidu Box. However, the newest version uh, wasn't available for Mac, only Windows, and the previous version available for Mac uh, made my MacBook freak out and put out big warning lights and being like, this is malware, you cannot install this, and it would not let me do it. So I wasn't able to test that software. Now I'm sure it isn't malware, but something about it triggered that, and um, no matter what avenue I went to go to try to install it, like I didn't just double click, I did try open as admin, all that other stuff and it just flat out refused. So there's something going on, but I'm sure it's actually okay. Uh, hopefully that gets solved. And yeah, that was so far my biggest negative experience along with this printer, but it's one that will undoubtedly improve very soon. It isn't really the fault of Nova 3D. So if you're using Chidu Box and you have no problem with it, then you will have no problems. <laughs> but if you're a Leechy user like me, then we're gonna have to wait a little bit, probably for the next update for this to become natively available. Another thing that the Gem 3 has is wireless connectivity. Uh, I do believe that this is where the Nova Maker slicer comes into play because um, most slicers, no matter which one it is, tend to not work very well with the wireless connectivity features. Um, and I'm not just saying about this machine, I'm saying about like all the Elgu ones, Anycubic, whatever, they're all generally pretty bad for connectivity. So I hope that gets solved someday, but it does have it and you can connect them as a fleet, manage files, send files, see progress, etc. It also does have built-in storage on the front here. You're provided with a little Nova 3D uh, eight gig stick. I believe it also has eight gigs built in. It does like to import files. If we go to printing, USB, I can then tap on this and I can immediately start printing or I can go internal memory and import it so that uh, we don't have to worry about this. We can go do another job and get ready for the next one. So how much is this machine gonna set you back? Well, it's, it's not cheap. <laughs> At the time of this review, it comes in at 1,857 Canadian rubles, which is about 1,325 USD on sale. I believe that this cost is directly tied in to the amount of metal and the amount of machining that was required to make the machine itself. There's not a single, I think maybe just the front panel is acrylic, but the, even this back panel that's just kind of decorative is bent steel. The side is steel, this is steel, the top is aluminum. You know, there's not a single piece about this that was plastified or uh, swapped out. For whatever reason, they decided to go all premium, and I believe that's where the vast majority of the cost went. This machine does weigh about 45 pounds, um, and I, I think that's enough to <laughs> testify how much metal is involved. And as a result of all this metal, the Z-axis is extremely silky smooth, there is no resonant vibrations from the motor at all. Uh, the cooling fans don't hum or sound like jet engines or anything. The whole machine feels very intentional. And yes, that cost is quite a bit to swallow, but if you're already using Bluecast resins combined with that Bluecast printing profile where you just hit the ground um, and you're already in business, you know, producing things, this is just another tool in your toolbox. I feel like it's, it's a price aimed at professionals, not at people aiming to print miniatures. I'll be honest, when I first got this machine all set up in printing and stuff, um, my impressions were pretty low, but it grew on me very, very quickly because my nearest comparison is like the Sonic Mini 8KS, which I am now kicking to the curb, which I was using as my secondary printer for when I review casting resins. Uh, this machine is much more up to date, so to say. It, has more functions that resins more frequently now benefit from, like the heating, 
Uh, the LCD resolution is more up to date compared to, I mean, the 8K isn't too far off, but when we compare it to like my old Prusa SL1S, which is still stuck at 2K, um, it, this is just a more relatable machine. So that said, um, I've already given my 8KS away. <laughs> Uh, the gentleman who was working on my deck was interested and I just, there you go, you can have it. Uh, it was literally collecting junk in my entryway. So better go to somebody. And as I just said, the SL1S is now so far outside of date, it's irrelevant to use. So the Gem 3 is going to become my new standard testing platform for when I do castable resins moving forward. And I think this is because this machine better represents the vast majority of the 3D printers that are on the market today and the resin profiles that I generate from it will be a much better baseline to start with from what I was getting on the older machines. It's not really conceivable for me, a small business owner working out of my drafty garage, <laughs> to keep up with every single 3D printer that comes to market and test every single one. That honestly should be the job of the resin companies that are designing these materials and trying to sell them. It'll never happen, of course. I think Bluecast is literally the only one that gets a machine before everybody else, usually, and they put out that resin profile so that their clients can actually move forward and, and get their job done. So kudos to Bluecast for reaching out to a, another company and working with them so closely. Kudos to Nova 3D for coming up with an incredibly solid machine. Um, as I said, I will be using it a lot more in the future. If you wanna check out that resin, or this printer, I will put links in the description below. I believe I will have an affiliate link for this printer. The other one is just a reference for XWAX. So you can look forward to seeing this machine more in future resin review videos. Um, hopefully we get some more. Um, I feel like we've reviewed most of them by now. <laughs> um, resin companies, you know, what's the next thing? Get on it, <laughs> give me more resin. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in casting, printing, engraving, pretty much anything to do with jewelry, uh, and you need some help with it, maybe you're just starting your business, uh, check out that membership button down here where you can join our Discord channel and get access to me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, if you have uh, the highest level tier, you actually get a call every month if you schedule it on time. Um, most of my members don't. And the community is growing. If you have a question and I'm not available, uh, someone will jump in, someone will be able to give you a hand. Uh, we pretty much have access to every printer on the market now, I think between all the members. Uh, so it's, it's becoming a community and uh, we always are looking for more people. So I will see you guys in the next video.